Some time ago, I released a video that was a comprehensive guide to choosing blankets for use while camping or out in the woods. I covered wool blankets, I covered downfill blankets, synthetic filled blankets, and then fleece blankets. And the reception of that video was very good. A lot of people liked the information that I provided. So as a result, I thought I would start a short series of videos focusing on some options for you that you can purchase. And so we're going to start that series out with this blanket. So this is from the company Arcturus. And if you're interested in finding more about this budget wool blanket, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank the company Arcturus for sending me this blanket so that I could share it with you. You know, in that earlier video, when I talked about wool blankets versus down versus synthetic versus fleece, one of the things I talked about was some of the pros and cons for a wool blanket. Now, I'm not going to go over everything that are pros and cons. You can go back to that video and see that there. But one of the things I mentioned was finding good affordable blankets. Now I say that in two ways. First, good and affordable. So I have a good collection, or quite a collection we'll say, of wool blankets that have been rescued from thrift stores. And great collection, I like it, is when I was early on in my bushcrafting uh, career, if you will, and I wanted to find wool blankets, there was only a couple places you could find affordable wool blankets. One was to get military surplus, which, let's face it, if it is real surplus, they're usually in pretty bad, you really have to look them over, let's put it that way, to make sure that they uh, are, are fit to use. Now, it, Canadian wool blankets, by the way, military ones, are all gray and have a black stripe down the middle. I mean, that's not a bad thing. I have a number of them, and they, you know, they're, they're good functional blankets. But you don't get a whole lot of choices. So military surplus wool blankets is one way of doing it. The other way is, like myself, you could go to a thrift store. Now, I'll tell you, when I first started getting wool blankets at the thrift store, they were cheap, like under $10, sometimes under $5 cheap. Good quality, 100% virgin wool blankets. And I'll tell you why that's uh, important in a minute. But they've become fewer and fewer and more expensive. They're starting to realize the value of those wool blankets. So your other alternative is hopefully ask maybe your aunts, your uncles, your grandparents to check their closets and attics and, and chests at home to see if they have wool blankets. Because while they were very popular at one time, they were replaced by the much softer fleece and synthetic blankets and even cotton blankets. Wool blankets, let's face it, they can be a little bit itchy. So yeah. Finding a good quality secondhand one or a brand new one on the secondhand market or even brand new in the store, that can run you up a lot of money. I mean, quite a bit. Now, on average, I've seen good quality wool blankets averaging between $150 and $200. Now, while affordable for some, not affordable for others, but they can go up from there. I have, and fortunately I was gifted this, I have a eight point Hudson Bay blanket valued at over $600. Believe me when I say it does not come out into the woods. It's a real keepsake, but that's how high and how much you can pay for a wool blanket. So when the company Arcturus reached out and started producing wool blankets, they were filling a niche that uh, it was just not there. A place where you could buy brand new wool blankets at an, a very affordable price. So how do they do it? First off, let me just tell you about the company. So Arcturus is in uh, Vancouver, Washington State. That's where they're located. Now their blankets aren't there, made there. I'll tell you where they're made in a moment. But they are uh, distributed, so it is an American company, but the blankets themselves are made in India. Now, having said that, they have a full range of blankets. The one I'm gonna show you here today is an 80, percent wool blanket 80 percent wool and 20 percent synthetic materials but they do have 70 percent 80 percent 90 and at least one 100 percent wool blanket of course prices are going to reflect the amount of wool in them the other thing is it's recycled wool meaning it's not 100 percent virgin wool blanket. So what's the difference between 100% virgin wool and recycled wool? It's just exactly what you say. In a brand new wool blanket, 100% virgin wool means it simply means it wasn't used for anything else. In a recycled uh, wool blanket, you're the makers are uh, putting together wools uh, 
brought together from, well, any number of sources. It could be other old, uh, other wool blankets that aren't fit for use anymore. It could be from sweaters or any other number of sources. So is there a benefit of 100% wool over, uh, uh, we'll say, a recycled wool blanket? Some, but not near as much. It has to do with the durability of the blanket. So in a brand new 100% virgin wool blanket, the fibers are longer, they have not been used for anything else, so the durability factor is there for them. In a recycled wool, the fibers tend to be shorter, so they have to be woven closer and tighter together, and the durability may not be the same as 100% virgin wool. Having said that, I don't think most people would know the difference. Like most people will not use their wool blanket enough to wear it out because wool blankets, that's one of the things about them, they are extremely durable. They can withstand a lot of use and abuse out in the woods and certainly at home. So uh, do you need 100% virgin wool? Absolutely not. In fact, this wool blanket is an 80-20, as I mentioned, and this thing is gonna outlast me. Uh, but there are some advantages to having recycled wool. Number one, it tends to be, well, I'll show you up close in a second, but they tend to be woven much tighter and closer together and thicker at the same time. And that gives you a more windproof or at least wind resistant blanket. It gives you a density of the wool blanket that will ensure more heat retention, less heat loss. Uh, yeah, otherwise all the benefits of a 100% wool blanket are here in this recycled wool blanket. Now, what about it being 80-20? Well, Anything below 80%, personally, I would stay away from because you're going to start losing some of the benefits from wool itself. But at 80, 20, 20% synthetic fibers, you have virtually all of the benefits a wool blanket has to offer with greater durability. That's what the nylon and the other synthetic materials offer is they offer durability to the wool blanket over something that is 100%. So yeah, okay, so that's the discussion on recycled. These are made in India. They are an 80-20 recycled wool blanket, but uh, to be honest, uh, I, you're not going to notice the difference for the most part. Um, I do when I compare it against a brand new or 100% virgin wool blanket. You can see it, it's a little bit lighter in the weave, the ones that are 100%, but I also have to consider they're meant for home use. You're throwing them on top of your bed, your sofa, or whatever. They're not intended for use out in the woods. So the fact that this is a denser weave is, is uh, a benefit for use out in the woods. Okay, so let's just talk about this blanket. Now you can see I have it rolled up and the straps that I have on this are homemade. It's nothing special. This is a shoulder strap off of an old kit bag bought from a, uh, the thrift store and a couple of nylon straps with uh, side lock buckles so that you can tighten it up. Now you can get real traditional and make some leather ones up or buy leather ones if you want. For me, functionally, this works just fine and it allows me to either attach it to the bottom of my backpack like I did today or just throw it on my shoulder and carry it like that. So yeah, it works just fine. All right, what I'm gonna do is just talk about the blanket for a second and give you some specifications on it. And then I'm gonna talk a little bit about using it as well. All right, so this is a, a 64 by 88 inch wool blanket. Now the specs I'm giving you now, I'm going to be putting in the video description below as well as the links, of course, so that you can check them out. And as I mentioned, they have a wide range of blankets, not only in materials, like how much wool in them, but also in sizes. So this is a, a double, I guess it's not a queen. It's the downsize from a double. Uh, so this is, I would call a standard size wool blanket. So yes, yeah, 64 by 88, a good size wool blanket for wrapping yourself in, maybe big enough for sleeping in, but I'll, I'll tell you ways of using it for sleeping in a few moments time. The weight comes in at four and a half pounds. It is what they call a 550 GSM, which stands for grams per square meter. Really, it's a measure of the density and 550 is considered a nice dense blanket. So yeah, that's one of the things I really like about this. As I mentioned, 80% recycled wool, 20% hypoallergenic synthetic fibers. Now, okay. Okay, so when this blanket arrived from Arcturus, brand new, of course, um, one of the first things I noticed is it had a smell on it. And uh, I'd noticed that on other wool blankets, especially ones that had been stored for a long period of times and on military surplus wool blankets. And now you're either going to 
be put off by the smell or you're not going to care about it at all. I was somewhere in between. I found the smell slightly, not so much offensive, but pervasive. In other words, it was there and you couldn't get away from the smell of it. When I checked with the company, they said that is the lanolin in the wool. So what is lanolin? Lanolin is the oil that sheep give off through their body, through their skin, out through the oil that in fact keeps it waterproof. That's what keeps a sheep waterproof, I guess, is the lanolin. Lanolin is actually a good thing to have in a wool blanket like this. Now here's the thing, I can only assume, because I can't get confirmation, that the lanolin in these recycled wool blankets has been put back in. You can actually buy lanolin and put back into the wool, because my 100% wool blankets, like my Hudson bag, there's no smell on that at all. But I have found that some wool blankets have a smell. This was quite strong. So here's something you can do, and I did with this wool blanket, that you can't do with other wool blankets. You can wash this. You can throw this thing in the washing machine. I wouldn't try that with my Hudson blanket, no matter how dirty it got. Not that I'm going to get it dirty. I would be taking that to a dry cleaner because if I was to throw that in a washing machine, it's just going to shrink mat right up. Now, some wool blankets, you may want to do that because the matted wool is great for some projects like mitts and hats and things like that. But if you're using this blanket for sleeping with or just staying warm around a campsite, you don't want it to shrink up. So first thing, wool tends not to get very dirty. Uh, it tends to shed dirty very well. No. Mind you, this is picking up a little bit of leaf matter off of the ground here, but that shakes right off most of the time. But as far as ground in dirt, it doesn't take much. I'll take a brush if I get it dirty. I'll take a brush when I get home and uh, uh, brush it off when the, when the mud is dry. And 90% of it comes off. If I was needing it to wash because there was a stain on it, I would spot wash it with some very light. Actually, what I use is dish soap. It seems to be very safe to use. You can buy wool soaps if you want. But um, in a blanket like this, when I got it and it had that smell on it, I threw this by itself, mind you, in my washing machine and washed it and uh, hung it out to dry and it did not shrink in the least. At least not measurably. If it did, it was half an inch. But what it did do is it got thicker. It seemed to get thicker and denser and softer from being washed. So while you don't have to do that with your brand new wool blanket, if you're put off by the smell, then why not? Just put it through the washing machine. At the very least, let it hang out and some of that smell will, and, you know, hang out in the wind. Some of that smell will go anyway. So yeah, that's got to be one of the single biggest benefits of a recycled wool blanket like this, especially where it has that 20% synthetic fibers, is it does not shrink. So yeah, I think that's, that's almost a selling point all by itself. If that didn't sell you on this, how about $49.99? Now that's US price without shipping, but that's what these list for on the Arcturus website, at least at the time of recording this video. Okay, what I wanna do is just show you a few things. Uh, this is not so much of a how-to for using a wool blanket like this, but I, I thought I would just throw this in and it will give you an idea of the size of it. All right, what I wanted to do is show you very quickly how I like to use this wool blanket other than as a sleeping blanket. So to be clear, most of the time I don't carry a wool blanket with me when I go out on day hikes. There's not a lot of reason to. It can be nice to do so because you can wrap up in them like I'm going to show you in a moment, but four and a half pounds even for this blanket is a little bit much more than I want to carry for just a day hike. However, if I was going out overnight and I'm trying to be a little traditional, or, and this is where I would use a wool blanket most commonly, is car camping or any type of stationary camping, especially if I had a fire. Because of course we know that's one of the benefits of a wool blanket and it's still present in the 80-20, it doesn't have to be 100% for this, is that it will resist sparks and little coals and embers coming out of your fire and getting on the blanket. It resists from burning or going through. My synthetic blankets, right through, right? So um, yeah, the wool blanket has some real advantages over synthetic when it comes to being around a fire. So yeah, very quickly, let me just show you this and uh, I'm gonna open this up. And as you can see, this is quite a big blanket, big enough for most people. Now, let me just show you this while I can. This is, hopefully that's gonna show up. That's the Arcturus symbol. That's their label on the blanket itself. The blanket itself is finished with a blanket stitch around the edges to keep it from fraying. The corners are just rounded a little bit. So yeah, all good. Now, 
As I said, this is a good big, big blanket. And I'm going to throw this over my shoulders as a cloak. Now, I have another full video on how to do this, how to use a blanket as a piece of clothing, like a cloak or uh, a coat or any number of ways of wrapping it up. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to make sure that it's not going to touch the ground when it's over my shoulders. So I had to throw some of it back uh, on itself so there is like a, a, an extra shoulder piece and now what I want to do is to bring this together and close it off so it doesn't fall off of my shoulders. Now I'm going to, I'm trying to make sure I don't cover up the microphone here, I'm going to show you three different methods of doing this around my pocket and I'm trying to get them out right now. They're getting caught up in my pocket. Oh, dropped them on the ground. There we go. I got them. And uh, I, like I mentioned, I have another video on this. Let's hope the camera picks me up clearly. There we go. Okay, how about this one? <laughs> have you seen those recently? This is what's known as a blanket pin. And a lot of people look at these. It's an oversized safety pin. Yes, ask exactly what it is. They're still available. You can still purchase. Look on Amazon and say blanket pin. Uh, I got five of them, I think, for less than $5. They all have a little bit of a, a vinyl coating on them, but you can get them plain stainless steel. And uh, they work, it's a safety pin, basically. Now, you can sharpen them. I actually did sharpen the point up ever so slightly on this just to make sure I'm not tearing. I'm actually penetrating through uh, the material that I'm using it on. Another one is a traditional old-school blanket pin, something that may be a couple hundred years old even. Well, uh, if you know someone that can forge one for you, if you want to pick one up of Etsy, uh, or, yeah, you can certainly do that. It gives you that traditional, they're very functional things. I made one out of two skewers, and I've shown this before on that other video. And by the way, that video I can link at the end of this. So this is a traditional blanket pin, but made out of stainless steel skewers, and it works exactly the same way. And I may get one made for me by some of my friends who do a lot of hammer forging, but, you know, only for... Uh, reason, what do you call it, historic reasons or, or being trying to be traditional, but that functions perfectly. Here's another one I showed in the video on how to use a cloak. I went to a thrift store and I bought a pair of suspenders and the alligator type closure suspenders, right? And cut them apart, used a little piece of nylon webbing in between the two of them. So and actually that's what I'm going to demonstrate with right now without covering up the microphone. Just clip it on both sides and uh, done. Where's my microphone at? Bring it out here so I'm not covering myself up. All right, so done. Now, the only thing you'll say is, well, Mark, that's not overlapping. Like, you still have a gap down the center. And you're right. You, I could have taken it and crossed over and pinched over here and got that overlap. I just wanted to do this for simplicity and quickness. But now I have a very warm cloak for wearing around the campfire, around the camp. Uh, you know, you can throw this if you're in your tent. You want to get up. You have to go out in the middle of the night for a short walk to a tree nearby. Then, you know, you can throw this over yourself retain your body heat. Very simple, very easy to do. All right, I just wanted to add in that little bit about using a wool blanket just to give you a little bit of the versatility in having one like this. Okay, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but Arcturus has a wide range of colors and styles of wool blanket sizes. Uh, certainly they have them in a traditional military green. If you really want to be traditional and low profile, uh, you certainly can buy one like that. Uh, I wanted something a little different that didn't look too military. So I got the buffalo plaid in red and black. They have this, I think, in green and black as well, maybe some other colors. So, uh, you know, lots of choices. You don't have to stick with the traditional old school looking wool blankets or military style looking wool blankets. Okay, so a couple thoughts on this before we close this video out. Does this replace all the other wool blankets I have in my collection, including my Hudson Bay blanket? Actually, yes, it does. For using out in the woods, this is a much better blanket for a couple of reasons. One, at $50, I'm not too concerned about it getting damaged beyond repair compared to my Hudson Bay blanket, which is never going to see the woods, likely. So, um, yeah, there is a real benefit to having an, an affordable wool blanket. But beyond that, 
The quality of this wool blanket says everything in and of itself. It is soft, it is durable, it is thick and dense so it resists uh, wind or heat loss. Um, it does resist getting soaked through as a good wool blanket will. They will. A lot of water will run off. I mean it still has some of the downsides. If it does get wet it's going to take a while for it to dry but it does resist getting wet in anything right up to and including a light shower. You can throw this right down on the snow and stay warm. You can sit on top of a wool blanket without worrying about compressing its insulative value because unlike down it keeps its value because it just doesn't compress or barely compresses we'll say. So yeah the only thing about a wool blanket is the weight to be quite honest. The weight is the one thing that deters most people including myself from taking this out in the woods on a day hike. But like I said, car camping or any other type of stationary camping, this rules, this really does. This is the type of blanket you want to have for all those reasons. Okay, I think I've said enough about the uh, blankets from Arcturus. What I would uh, do is ask you now if you have any experience with Arcturus wool blankets or any other budget wool blankets and your thoughts on them. If you have any questions or comments about the Arcturus wool blankets, put those in the comment section below as mentioned. Mentioned. All the information I gave you will be in the video description below. And I will be coming to you shortly with another blanket, but something different for the next one. So stay tuned for that. But until then, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.